Swallows and Amazons, the classic British children's novel made into a film and set here in the glorious Lake District. My personal favourite as a child, it combined all the ideals of lakes, islands and of course sailing. Over here we've got an exact replica of the swallow, but this one is the real Amazon used by the children. These boats are actually clinker built, which means that the planks overlap with rivets along the side, a design first used by the Vikings. This boat dates from 1920, and one of the reasons that it was used is that it's so stable for small children, and big ones. And just over there, we've got the boathouse where all the adventures began. This is Bankground Farm on the northern shores of Coniston Water. It's in Arthur Ransom's book and in the film as the Swallow's fictional holiday home. The farmhouse bed and breakfast is still here, and so is the landlady who let the casting crew through her door 30 years ago. Not that she knew what she was letting herself in for. After talking about it, he said, we'd like a shot or two here and a shot or two there, and we'll have to talk about money. And to me, with seven kids, I thought this was great. And they offered me £75, which in 30 years ago was a lot of money. And so I, I didn't know what was going to happen. So what happened? Oof, well, they came. And uh, there was the double-decker buses, there was a construction kit. They just took the whole house over, they redecorated it. They took every room over, they shifted beds from here, beds from there, sideboards from here, sideboards from there. But in the end... They were about three quarters of the way through it when uh, somebody said to me, you're going to have to stop them. So I closed the gate at the top with a chain and told them what I wanted. And Which I was what? <laughs> were you allowed to know? Um, a thousand pound. Which was a lot of, a lot of money. A lot, lots of money from 75, wasn't it? A lot of money, yeah. And pay up they did. Swallows and Amazons is unashamedly a children's film. Adults play only a very small part. But for this film, there was something more than just good acting skills needed. The most important thing was that they survived the sailing, because of course they were going to be uh, in boats without um, life jackets, and in at times slightly treacherous conditions because the wind changes so quickly on the slate that they have to know what they can do and their ages varied between eight and a half and 13. So how did you fit all the children and a whole crew in one of the small boats? Well that worried us a bit before we started filming so we designed um, a pontoon and it was shaped rather like this like a cross. Mm -hmm. It's about 20 feet long and the boat fitted in like that. It was tied there and tied there and the boom would come out and then we could put a camera track round there, we could put sound standing there, we could have lights there if we needed them. Then when we needed to do another part of the boat we moved the boat round to there and then we moved the track round to there and so on, according to where the wind was. And this way, that we could have complete sound coverage, get all the pictures we want, and not get in the way of the children. Another of the film's locations that's right here is this small wooded island just waiting to be explored. Peel Island at the south end of Coniston. Used as Wildcat Island in the stories, it's the very same island that the children discover in the film. This is the secret harbour on Peel Island. Although today it's not quite so secret. This is where the Amazons made secret markings so that they could navigate their way through the treacherous rocks. Typical, beaten by some modern day Amazons. Hello Amazons, you've been for a swim already? Yes. God, it's a bit cold. <laughs> Too cold for me anyway. I'm off to explore. These days Peel Island and much of the shore around the lake is owned by the National Trust. It can be explored by anyone although you will need a boat to get here. Filming was great fun for everyone. Because the actors were so young, they couldn't work long hours, so the crew would finish early and enjoy their surroundings. The two young actresses, Susanna Hamilton, who played Susan, and Sophie Neville, who played Titty, were inseparable. Am I right in thinking yeah. that you haven't seen each other for quite some time now? No, not for a very long time. Probably about 30 years or something, yeah. something like that. <laughs> Since the premiere. 
you know, the Arthur Ransom books were, were so popular with children and still are. Being able to to play out all of those things. I mean, what was it like at that time, and having all these adults around filming it? It was fun. It was really fun. I think we were really, really privileged. Um, and we knew it, I think, really, to an extent. Yes. I think we did, we uh, inhabited our parts without any of that sort of um, method. What did you think of, of Claude as a director? Oh, we loved him. We loved him. We loved and he him. gave us danger money when we he had gave to. us danger money, he gave us overtime. The swimming scenes were... Cold. Claude had to pay us big time for that. We got two pounds. <laughs> and, and you were very brave. And I went in more than you. And you went in twice. <laughs> did you, did, was that quite difficult to get in that cold water? It was meltwater. Oh, we don't mind that. That's fine. She was brilliant. I minded. But when you came out, there's a picture of you all wrapped in a blanket. It was cold. It was what? Well, the lakes are cold, yeah. You have a dip now. In the film, the children's exploits were usually at the expense of actor Ronald Fraser, who played the Amazon's Uncle Jim, better known as retired pirate Captain Flint. He lived on a houseboat which comes under friendly attack at the end of the film, and he comes to the same sticky end as most pirates. And this is Uncle Jim's houseboat, which was never really a houseboat at all. In fact, it was never even on Coniston water. It was shot here on Derwent water. It was carefully modified by filmmakers and then returned to its former glory as a passenger launch. And it's still used today, the Lady Derwent Water. Swallows and Amazons has become part of the history of the Lake District around Windermere and Coniston. When Arthur Ransom wrote the book, he was trying to recreate an idealised version of his own childhood. He succeeded in inspiring generations of other childhoods, including my own. And I think that's exactly why the film is still enjoyed by children and adults alike, even today. Because there's a part of all of us that wishes we could go back to those innocent and perfect times. <laughs>